TV. What's going on, you breeders? Max here. And Seabomb. Max and Seabomb coming back at you with another episode of New Breed TV. Live from the new Fear Factorium, Australia's number one Fear Factory Museum. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. The new Fear Factorium. Now, Seabomb. We've got a new Fear Factorium here. Yeah, so we've, we've had a bit of a hiatus. There's a good reason for that. Max, what's been happening? Well, we've actually bought a new house, so I've had to move the Fear Factorium from the old house to the new house. Now, that's taken some time, and we're going to be putting out a new video all about the new Fear Factorium because it's doubled in size, and we've got a lot more in here. As yeah, you Max can see... got heaps of new stuff. I do. As you can see, I've wired up some brand new um, display cabinets behind me. Um, we've got double the space to put double the amount of gear. So I've been collecting a lot more stuff. There's more stuff on the walls, and this place has just gone ballistic. It's berserk. <laughs> it is. But, uh, yeah, so the plan moving forward is we want to do shorter segments um, and bring the content into more easy-to-digest chunks. That's right. Um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be uploading shorter segments from now on, because um, New Breed TV can sometimes go for over an hour long, um, and it hasn't been good for content and channel retention. So we're gonna be uploading more content more often and shorter segments um, to just really bang out the bang out the content for you guys. Um, because we know it's a bit of a slog sitting here for over an hour watching us talk shit about Fear Factory. Yeah, and it, it's a, it's a lot of work for Max. He's got to he's got to edit some of this stuff down, and it's um some of these episodes get pretty pretty gargantuan. So yeah, yeah, you want right. to make this stuff uh, yeah easy to easy to to view and and get get in and out. Yeah, exactly. So so yeah, like we said, shorter segments. So our usual segments are going to be uh, continue to be uploaded. So but they'll just be uploaded on their own. So. Um, you'll notice that we've uploaded two street talks uh, since we've been back and then another interview with Dino. So we're going to be pumping out the content for you guys to try and stay up to date um, and put them out more often for you guys. Now, moving on, C-Bomb, um, this episode is mainly about Dino doing a guitar clinic in Perth. So we caught up with him at Good Things Festival in Sydney. Um, we did a bit of an interview with him, which was awesome. Absolutely. And then from there, um, he kept doing the Good Things Festival, came back to Sydney and did another show, and then flew over to Perth to the Ormsby headquarters, um, where he caught up with Perry and all the Ormsby crew to do a meet and greet, two meet and greets and two guitar clinics. And we actually got Ando, our Perth correspondent, to actually go in and do some interviews and hang out with uh, Dino, Perry and the crew um, and see what it was all about. So, Ando, over to you, mate. What's up, new breeders? It's your Perth correspondent here, Andy Jones. Today, it's a pleasure, honour and privilege to be your Perth correspondent for New Breed TV. Here I am on site at the Ormsby Guitar Factory in Canning Vale, Perth, Western Australia. Today, we're getting a meet and greet and a guitar clinic from Fear Factory's Dino Cazares. We'll also bring you an interview with Dino the man himself and Perry Ormsby. So without further ado, let the meet and greet commence. Comes in, 
the speaker can't hit it. <laughs> so I just completely <laughs> dropped that experiment. I, I, when, when, uh, when this record first came out, a lot of people were telling me, like, when they put that song in, like, holy, sorry, this might be a lot of cussing. <laughs> I cuss a lot, if you don't mind. <laughs> happy to hear that, but people were going, holy shit, like, and like, we heard of guys fucking up for speakers because of it, you know what I mean? So I know that guys like went out and bought better sound systems just for that. And I knew Salomon, they were actually, you know, doing sound for other bands. They would use that song just to reference the PA speaker to see how well it handled the way. It's basically an amp model, uh, module uh, where you can profile your own tones on it. Okay, so that, that all, it's all programmed. Yeah, it's totally all totally all programmed and everything. Um, I've done a lot of my classic heads that I've had, like my old Marshalls. Um, recently, um, I got my D-manufacturer head back. Yeah. It was stolen, like back in 1999. Sure. And it was a modified head that I had made, like, um, the yeah, way yeah. back in like 1980 something. 88, yeah. So now back. Some guy found it. <laughs> and he ended up with you. And he had it for 20 years. What? And finally gave it back. Finally, finally reached out to me and I got it back. Yeah. Sick. So that profile, that head. Into there? Um, yeah. Does it emulate close by bang on your again or is it. Can you pick the difference? Uh, you can hear a slight difference, yeah. yeah. But first of all, it's different guitars, different speakers. Right, um, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Obviously, when I did D manufacture, I did it on a six string guitar, but now I've been playing seven string guitar for the past, you know, since 1995. So yeah, it's slightly changed. The tone slightly changes. Yeah. What's up, new breeders? It's Ando, your Perth uh, correspondent here, talking to the one and only Dino Cazares at Hell the yeah. Ormsby factory for the for the guitar clinic. Yes, here we are at the Ormsby headquarters. I just did two meet greets and guitar clinics and Q and A today here in the Ormsby headquarters in Perth, Australia. One of the one of the greatest places in Australia. But don't get me wrong, I love all the world, mate. The world. Yeah. Um, and it, was, it went really well. Um, both of them were sold out. There was actually a few kids here today, too. A few youngsters. It was awesome. I tried to uh, keep my cussing down. Yeah, I, I didn't want to offend any youngsters, but their parents said it's okay, you can cut. I was particularly impressed with that uh, young boy, Jackson, the 13-year-old, who was a massive fear factor. There was a 13-year-old kid here who asked me like 10 questions. That guy knew what he was talking about, and uh, he was just a massive fan. I didn't realize he was that young until I asked him, I go, how old? Oh, dude, he goes, I'm 13, because he looked a little older. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You knew he was young, you just didn't know he was that young. Yep. Yeah. 
there was some there was some kids here like eight eight years old and ten year old kids here so it was good to see the new generation coming up the new breeders coming up you know what so how's the trip to australia been dino it's been amazing i mean the first part of this trip was just pretty much um playing with soulfly doing a tour uh did a show in melbourne and then we also we did an off show in melbourne and we also did the the good things festival three of them melbourne sydney brisbane we also did an off uh, show uh, at Sydney, and then um, I flew over here. I've been in Perth, Australia, for about five days now. So yeah, awesome. It's been great hanging out at the Orsby headquarters and seeing the custom shop. And speaking of the custom shop, this is a killer custom eight string that Perry put together to me for me in the last couple of days. Um, it's an amazing guitar. Uh, if you ever get a chance to buy an Orsby, you should definitely, for sure, buy one. He's definitely one of the one of the best when it comes to the multi scale. And um, even if you're not a guitarist, get yourself a piece of Fear Factory memorabilia. Get your hands on it. You can see one here in the background. This, this is like wall art right here. You know, I have one. I don't even want to take it out on tour because I'm afraid something's going to happen to it. You know what I mean? Because we only made 25 of those. And that's that's the la that's Perry's right there. So what, that's the last one. Yeah, there's For only 25 of them. That's, that's it. Um, we're releasing the D manufacturer model. Yep. Um, Got my name on one of those. Yes. Those, those. I think they're making a hundred only. Right. Yeah. So, not that many. My neck profile is flat. I like it flat. So, yeah. I have smaller hands, so it's better for my hands. Where to next? After Australia? Um, we'll go back home, obviously, for Christmas. Going to be home for the holidays. Going to be spending time with the family. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Yep, exactly. Um, and just, you know, like I said, just relaxing spending time with the family we're not i'm not going to be working on any music time is off you know just uh pretty much a vacation and then starting in january we start going back in the studio start working on more songs and then february we started getting prepared for the tour that we're doing with static x and yeah so that's coming up in feb and march february starts february 24th and i think in frisco in san francisco yeah right so we finally get to see the new Fear Factory vocalist. Well, you'll see him before that. We will? Yeah. You're going to release a track before then? Maybe not. Right, okay. Because at the moment, we are labelless. We have no record company. Okay, so how's that hunt been going? How's the what going? The hunt for a new record. Well, the hunt, the hunt. He thought I said something else. I thought he said a hump. How's the hunt going? I'm like, who's up? Um... <laughs> The hunt's great. It's great. I mean, we got a few offers and we're just, uh, you know, it's, it's all about negotiation. Sometimes it takes, you know, some time. Sometimes it, you know, it can be really quick. Um, but I want to make sure it's the right, whoever we do it with, it's going to be the right merger. So, Dino, today we had, I would say, probably about 60 to 80 Fear Factory, oh, Dino Gazaris fans, I'll say, because a lot of people were here, not just for Fear Factory, they were Divine Heresy fans, Brujeria fans, hope I pronounced that correctly. Assassino. Assassino fans. Yes. So, they obviously derived a whole lot of fulfillment from seeing their favorite artists uh, shredding away on the guitar. My question for you is, what did you get out of it, mate? Um, well, obviously, I like putting a smile on people's faces, you know, especially when, especially when you got young kids here who are wearing. There was a kid here; he was ten years old. He was wearing the Solvenir Machine T-shirt. Now that's cool. That is amazing. Um, and his mother said that his dad got him into it. You know what I mean? So he's just addicted to Fear Factory, which is great. Um, you know, you got to start him off young. And he's obviously his son. Yeah, and he was the drummer that was showing me his feet too. He says he could play D Manufacturer. I'm like, wow, I want to hear that. I hope he makes a video and puts it up online. I wonder if he can play it on the one foot like you said. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, that, that'd be amazing. I mean, I've been seeing kids like six, seven years old shredding on Slipknot online. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I like to see him do it. That'd be amazing because you never know. You know, he, he's definitely our, the future. Absolutely. I want to say thank you to Perry Orsby for organizing this and getting me out here, uh, signing me, uh, making me some insane guitars that are affordable that you guys can buy out there. Um, thanks for Beto, Amy, Alex, and Jet, and everybody else who's working here at the Ormsby headquarters. Um, it's been fun, it's been great. Now tonight, we party. <laughs> nice one. So uh, yeah, the floor is yours, Dino. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Or? Um, yes, I wanna say thanks to all the support uh, from all the fans over the years. I'm glad you stuck by us through thick and thin. 
And I guarantee you that we're going to come back strong and strong as fuck. So I hope everybody's out there ready, wait, wait, pumped, pumped, see what's to come. It's going to be good. Don't worry. Cool. Well, thanks. You know what? Thank you, new breeders. All the best, guys. Cheers, man. So, new breeders, I've got the man in the castle in which we are right now, Mr. Perry Ormsby, who's been a staple of the Perth scene for a long, long time. He's been making guitars since 2006, is it? 2000. 2004. 2004, my 2004 is when the, the company was founded. 2003 was the first guitar. Right, because I've got some photos of me wearing some Ormsby guitar merch from 2006. And I remember it was so, very fresh on the scene. And the, the devil girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Long sleeve. Yeah. Still got some of them. Sick. So, Perry, please tell us about uh, how fulfilling it's been having uh, Dino Casares here from Fear Factory doing his thing. Yeah, look, it's been great. Um, we met Dino in 2016, I think it was, for the first time. And he played some guitars. And my favorite photo of Nam was actually Dino playing this ebony top height. He's just looking at it and it's like, you know, I want a guy to look at a guitar like that, you know? <laughs> and um, obviously we couldn't publish the photos online because it wasn't right. You know, I mean, we could have, but it wouldn't be right. He's with another company and we just don't do that. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we kept in, I guess we, there was some messages that went backwards and forwards. Um, the guy that was doing social media for us at the time was a big Fear Factory fan. So, so you know, he was keen to chat and that kind of thing and we we deliberately held back and we didn't want to overwhelm him I didn't want to be fanboys you know and then we caught up again 2017 I think I sent you a guitar in 2018 uh we had to smuggle you into Nam 2018 you had to give us you had to give a guitar back to us uh we'd load you a guitar to do some recording you're with Ibanez we had to get that guitar back without Ibanez finding out about it whilst doing it at NAMM. So it was all hidden, all our gear was hidden inside Ibanez gig bags, cases and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it was quite uh, difficult because also I had to meet you out the front, didn't I? And uh, we had to walk five metres apart from each other so it didn't look like we were together. <laughs> but um, yeah, eventually a concert came together end of 2018 ready for the 2019 show, which was when we launched uh, his signature model with the black camo. We did a black one as well. Um, yeah, and, and well, this 2020, this is when we did the Aztec Sun. And- um, Love that guitar, man. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah that was cool. Um, I was privileged enough, thank you to Alberto. He took me uh, downstairs and he showed me uh, some of the laser. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, we've got four that we're making at the moment. And they're full custom shop. Yep. Yeah, so I guess most of the guys, they want what Dino has, you know, so they're different to a regular custom client that they want what he's got, yep. you know, yep. and then they may just want a different color, yep. but they want his spec. Yep. So that's cool. Um, and yeah, I think they're all going to be different, aren't they? And none of them are going to be the same as Dino's color-wise. Only one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I think we'll end up, make, I think we'll make a couple of spares just for the fun of it. Because they look—they're so fun to do, you know. And it's like getting to play with colors, and and you don't even see with that particular guitar that we made for Dino. You don't see the detail that went into it, where it was um, black with turquoise and gold, wasn't it? And the turquoise, if you look at it, is all—we've we've used to paint the cracks, so it looks like real stone when you get up close and look at it. But you never see that in a photo, and it's like all those little things I love doing it. But Alberto was saying that some aren't going to be that stock color that's been advertised. No, they're they're be, going to be different colors be coming through. Colors. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter to me if I mix up black or mix up blue, you know? Um, so if we could make the, the client get his version of Dino's ideas, so that's, all right, but that's awesome, you know? Um, and we want to do that with the blood, the blood camo as well. We want to, we want to, we want to mess up, mess up, mess up around with those colors on that a little bit. We tried a couple of things. Didn't think it looked all that good. I reckon a green would look sick in there. 
Yeah, that's one idea, but th I think we've got a better idea than that, don't we? All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, under wraps, under wraps. <laughs> got a better idea than that. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's amazing with gold hardware. So, um, actually quite excited to see that one. It's, it's going to be cool. So, uh, yeah, awesome, Perry. Uh, so, the floor is yours, mate. Uh, anyone you'd like to thank? Ah, uh, just Dino for just being there, man. Like, you know, the good thing about Dino is, he, you know, he's partnered with us he's a signature artist he's an endorsee but it's more than that you know he'll give me a call to say that he's at the rainbow and he's just ordered a <laughs> fillet steak or whatever and he's thinking about me is that you know or uh some funny will pop in his head and he'll just give us a call or oh, oh, oh. love it we, we we're mucking around in the workshop we had a bit of a joke that relates back to something from five years ago and it's like oh, i'm just gonna call dino you know it's awesome you guys have that relationship. Yeah, and I think that's that's how you know that's how it should be. I think it's phenomenal that you know we're based here in Little Old Perth, yep, most and we've got that connection with you know one of the biggest yeah. metal icons of the world, in my opinion. Yeah. I think yeah, it's I, absolutely I, amazing. All along, I've never thought that we're just a Perth company. You know, we've never advertised ourselves really as Perth-based. We don't push that whole local thing. And there were even guys here today who reached out to say, I actually didn't know you guys were a perf. We've delivered guitars to people within a kilometre of this workshop that didn't know we were here. Because we've always thought, you know, we're, we're bigger than, not to be cocky or anything, but we don't- Nah, man, throw it out there. No, I mean, we don't, we're not worried about the, we worry about the local guys, but we worry about everyone, you know? And if the local guys are here, cool, we can give them even more, you know? But, um, you gotta get out there. Yeah, you know, and there, and there's so many guitar makers that, that stick to the little area. And you got to make big, hairy, audacious goals. Well, you just got to take a score. It's got to take a risk and, and just have the balls to say hello to someone. You know what I mean? Like the first time Dino came by, it's like shit, 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 shit. Don't worry, I would have been shitting bricks you know, as well, man. I'm gonna go tell <laughs> about this guitar that I built for a guy, and he uh, said to me that he wanted me to play Lynchpin when I was doing the setup. I never told him that story. I then we got into a conversation, and, and, and you know, it's uh, it's great. You know, I love my job. Uh, there's nothing else. It's not even a job. Yeah, so it's, it's a play. Hobby. Yeah, I get yeah. to come to do my hobby for six days a week, sometimes seven, and it's great. Um, love all the clients. Biggest problem we ever have is still fun. You know what I mean? It's it's that's a good problem to have. Yeah, you know, like I think you know, I think we run a fairly cool workshop and then we're trying to make it obviously we have busy times and whatnot we've got to get shit out but uh for the most part you know we have extended lunch breaks we muck around a bit don't we better you know yeah. as you do when we you run your own business yeah we have a bit of fun you know what i mean mm. yeah there's never there's not a lot of huge deadlines we've got to stick to for boys that you can't do that all the time every now and then we've got to do it we had to do it here but um, for the most part, it's got to be fun. I was, why are you coming to work? Let's get any other job. Absolutely. I want people to come to work because I love it. And yeah, that's how it is for me. Judging from Alberto talking about his role here, he speaks very passionately about what he does. And you can tell you've built a fantastic culture in the company. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. Like, Beto wants to go and design up a new thing. It's like, yeah, man, that would shit hot let's do it so you give him that creative license just yeah, yeah. do what we he do, wants. when we do mock-ups for a run what do i do most of the time I, I come and say give me give me eight choices mate yeah go, go. we'll do flame tops this time but come up with something and then i'll probably just because i'm the boss i'll say one has to go he's the boss us, i'm the boss and i want you to add in one more um but for the most part like everyone gets to say um you know uh, We've had bookkeepers that thought that they ran the place, you know, more than I do. Um, it's, but I think it's cool. We all have a say. We all get, it, you know, if we're building a custom that's not particularly for a client, we all get a say in it. Yep. Yeah, it's it's, it's cool fun. Yeah, it's a it's an awesome brand. I really love what you're doing here, Perry. And we've got so many ideas. I mean, like we never, when we first started talking with Dino, like he didn't, he didn't want a blood camo. You wanted a black guitar, and I'm like, no, can't just do a black guitar. Come on, let's come on, let's let's do something here. Then we got talking about the camo. Remember, the camo was a surprise. I also asked for a green camo. 
Yep. And you're like, nah, let's do nah. something different. And you're like, nah. And like, let's do, so you sent me a, or Beto mocked up a few different colors and red and black camo was the one that we picked, the blood yeah. camo. So that was, to me, I think that was the best one. All right, Perry, we'll uh, wrap this one up because the Ormsby crew have a Christmas party to get to. And Mexican themed Christmas. Oh, I'm jealous. That's amazing, <laughs> man. Get some gazpacho into you, man. That stuff's amazing. Taco. Enchiladas, fajitas, empanadas. I love all Mexican food, man. You can't go wrong with Mexican food. Gonna get some jalapenos, mate. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true Aussie. J jalapeno, mate. Jalapenos. We're hopeless with our pronunciation here in Australia, dude. Absolutely hopeless. <laughs> all right, so... Thanks for your time today, gents, and right. metal on. Thank you. Hey, there we go. How good was Ando? Yeah, that was sick. So, uh, Thanks heaps, Ando, for getting on board with uh, New Breed TV. We've now got a, another another guy in the fold helping us out. Hell yeah. You did a good job too, Ando. Bloody professional as, wasn't he? Yeah. That professional's uh, Ando, Seabong. He's got a voice for radio <laughs> for sure. It's excellent. Nah, great job, man. And uh, we look forward to working with you more in the future for whatever comes up. Uh, anything we can do around Australia and content for Fear Factory, he'll be uh, involved in, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's a good egg, Ando. Well done, mate. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, the uh, interview with Dino and Perry Seabon. Bloody hell, that was um, that was good. It was good to... I've never seen an interview with Perry uh, before. Um, and I think Ando did a really good job. It was a really good interview. It sounds like they've got an amazing culture. Absolutely. At, yeah. uh, at Ormsby over there. And everyone loves coming to work, which which is awesome. And um, Yeah, all about the fun. Yeah, and they're just super happy to be working with Dino. And like, yeah, it sounds like they've developed a really good relationship. And they're just working well together. It's Yeah, it's great to see. Yeah, onward and upward for them. We'll look forward just to, to more of, of what they've got coming up. Yeah, yep. and coming out. I mean, that guitar that Dino, they made for Dino, I think they made it for him within like 72 hours or something like that. Um, wow. Um, it's a sick looking headless um, guitar. Um, and yeah, the, the guys just smashed it out. Um, and it looks awesome. So well done to the Ormsby crew on that one. Yeah, not, not used to seeing Dino with a headless guitar in his hands. That's, that's a bit of a first, I would say. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So there you go, guys. All right, New Breed as well. That is it for this episode of New Breed TV. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And um, we will see you next time on New Breed TV. Yeah.